If you search on Google the inverse square law for photography, it gets very mathematical and very complicated. What I'm gonna do on this video is how I wish people would teach me how the inverse square law works and how it will help you in your speed light photography. The beautiful Samantha here is holding a speed light and I'm gonna just ask her, you're gonna put the speed light against the wall like this. It looks like science and it is. I'm gonna just take a shot as so. When the light travels through space, it gets very intense, very closely, but the light fades very fast. To explain better, here is a simple graph. No need to know it by heart, you just need to be aware of it and how the light works. As you can see, the light fades very quickly in the beginning and in the end, it loses intensity or luminosity very slowly. So, what that translates to photography? I put the speed light inside of this softbox so it will get this a little bit smooth light but the theory of the light is always the same i use the system godox if you want to know about it i have a video talking about that but for now let's focus on the inverse square law so the first shot that i'm gonna do actually shut down the radio so this flash won't fire the idea is to have as dark as possible image it looks weird but at least we know that the light that will affect the photo will be only the flash okay that's the first thing so let's turn on the radio and as you can see the light is very far away from uh, samantha and samantha is halfway from distance from the background and from the flash and the light is into the samantha into the background everywhere now if i get closer you're gonna see that with the exact same settings on my camera, Samantha will be overexposed. It's not what we want, but this is just an example of what will happen. And as you can see, the light is way too aggressive on Samantha because she's very close to the light, okay? I'm gonna lower down something. So I am at 200 ISO, I'm gonna put like 50 ISO. So I have the camera on the expanding ISO. So that's why I can use 50 and see which exposure we're gonna get. And there you go. Now, Samantha is way better. Now, comparing the light further away and the light extremely close, Samantha has the correct exposure on her, but the background, it's much, much darker. Why? Because my exposure is in this plane in relationship to the flash. So the light will fade quickly on the background. Por que é que a luz não está boa? Ah, onde agora estavas mais perto? Não estavas. So, um, what happened here is uh, that Samantha went 10 centimeters back and the, the light fades as so fast that it makes a difference. It's cool to have a black background, but it's very hard to shoot with the flash extremely close because any small changes in the distance means bad lighting so she's very close if i take a shot like that beautiful smile perfect as you can see she has a good exposure on her the background is starting to uh, fade into darkness as i want it i'm gonna just ask her to advance 10 centimeters closer to the light okay just a little bit and if i try to take the exactly same shot you will see that she's starting to get overexposed, okay? And the other para she will be getting in the darkness. So, one of the big advantages, taking a shot of the flash extremely far away, I'm gonna add more light on the background because this is a small garage. Garage. So this is a small uh, garage. If it was a big space, the light had more distance to fade out, okay? This is not the case, so the background will be eliminated as well because that flash is very far away. And I know that I need to pump up my ISO. I'm gonna take a shot with Samantha there. There we have a good exposure on Samantha. And now I'm gonna ask Samantha to get closer to the wall. Okay. As you can see, Samantha has a correct exposure. Uh, without changing my settings on my camera. The inverse square law says that the, the difference of exposure from here, from all the way down here, it's so insignificant that 
well, you have everything in about the same exposure. There you go. It's extremely simple as so. As the light from the flash to Samantha is important, but the distance from Samantha to my camera is irrelevant. Samantha will stay at the same place, okay? You're gonna take the, the same picture again with me extremely close and then I will be further away and you will see that the exposure will be exactly the correct one. Let me just be awkwardly close. Nobody take pictures like that, but we're gonna do it for science. As you can see, beautiful light on Samantha. Now I'm gonna go further back and I'm gonna take the shot of Samantha. Same frame, same exposure, same flash power. And there you go. We have the exact same exposure if I am close or further away. Now, why is that? Is because the light that the camera is receiving is reflected light, okay? The reflected light is already on the area that won't affect that much. The best thing that you can do is try it by yourself. Get your model extremely close to the light, get it far away, adapt the settings of your camera, see how the background will react, all of that, okay? Thank you very much to Samantha to help me with this video. Madame Rosa as well, and there you go. So drop a like if you learned something, comment on below if you have any questions, and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. I am Miguel, until next time, see ya.